No going back. As global warming gets progressively worse, some scientists are considering engineering the climate to cool it down, but a new study shows it may do more harm than good. Stratospheric aerosol injection is a form of geoengineering that involves spraying sulfur dioxide into the upper atmosphere to form clouds that reflect solar radiation. Using computer models, a study found that spraying 5 million tons of sulfur dioxide above the equator every year for 50 years could drop surface temperatures by 1 degree Celsius. But if sulfur seeding suddenly stopped, the planet would warm rapidly, with temperatures rising several times faster than the predicted rate. Plant populations would die out, and wildlife, especially amphibians and land animals, wouldn't be able to migrate quickly enough. The loss of just one species could impact an entire ecosystem. It just goes to show how tricky it is to mess with something as unpredictable as climate. So despite all the benefits we think geoengineering might bring, we're probably better off focusing on reducing greenhouse gas emissions. It's not looking good. Chocolate is about to say goodbye to the world. If you're a fan of chocolate, you better start hoarding it now because it may be joining the dinosaurs in just a few decades. Scientists say chocolate is in danger of disappearing by 2050 due to warmer and drier conditions from global warming. Cacao can only be grown within a narrow strip of rainforested land about 20 degrees north and south of the equator, where the temperature, rain and humidity are relatively constant year-round. Over half of the world's chocolate comes from two African countries, Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana. However, rising temperatures over the next decades will make those regions unsuitable for cacao. Researchers from the University of California are now working with the Mars Company to save the cacao plant from disappearing. Berkeley scientists hope to modify cacao DNA using CRISPR technology to develop plants that won't wilt or rot at the current elevations under warmer conditions. No, but really, life without chocolate? South Asia faces a hot, humid and deadly future. Climate change will make parts of South Asia too hot to live in by the end of the century, threatening the lives of millions of the world's poorest people. In 2015, more than 3,500 people were killed in heat waves in the region, but things are apparently going to get much, much worse. The authors of a new study say densely populated agricultural regions in South Asia will experience increases in heat and humidity that will make them uninhabitable by the year 2100. The scientists say if climate change continues on its current trajectory, heat waves will cause the wet bulb temperature to rise to deadly levels in parts of India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka. Wet bulb temperature is calculated by combining temperature, humidity, wind speed, sun angle, and cloud cover to measure heat stress in direct sunlight. According to the study, by the year 2100, 75% of South Asia's population would experience wet bulb temperatures higher than 31 degrees Celsius, which is dangerous for humans. In this scenario, 4% of the population would also experience deadly wet bulb temperatures exceeding 35 degrees. South Asia is home to one-fifth of the world's population and has high levels of poverty. Scientists say the poor will feel the brunt of rising temperatures because they lack access to air conditioning and other methods to beat the heat. They say cutting greenhouse gas emissions would help lower the impact of climate change on the poor. Middle East and North Africa soon to become uninhabitable. A group of researchers believes temperatures in the Middle East and North Africa will rise dramatically over the course of the 21st century. The research suggests even if Earth's average temperature increases by 2 degrees Celsius, summer temperatures in the Middle East and North Africa will increase more than twice that. The temperature could rise to 46 degrees Celsius during daytime by mid-century, and it could be as high as 50 degrees Celsius at the end of the century. Also, heat waves could occur 10 times more often than now. The hottest period lasted for about 16 days on average between 1986 and 2005. However, these areas will experience 80 days of extreme heat per year by mid-century and up to 118 days by the end of the century. The increasing air pollution caused by desert dust storms could make the environmental conditions intolerable, forcing people to migrate. Bummer, dude. Rising temperatures have caused a major downturn in male turtle populations in the northern Great Barrier Reef. New research has found that 99% of sea turtles in the Pacific Ocean's biggest green sea turtle rookery are female. Researchers suspect this is due to warming temperatures. 
A sea turtle's sex is temperature dependent. Males are born at around 27.7 degrees centigrade, while females are born at around 31 degrees centigrade. An area further south holds a ratio of two females to one male sea turtle. According to National Geographic, recent research looking at 75 rookeries from around the globe put the ratio at 3 to 1. If rising temperatures continue, male turtles may be wiped out. And nobody wants that. Increasingly violent typhoons to hit China and Southeast Asia. New research shows typhoons in East and Southeast Asia are becoming stronger and looks set to continue to intensify. Ocean waters in East and Southeast Asia have become significantly warmer. As typhoons pass over warm water, they absorb some of the thermal energy and become stronger. Research reveals that typhoons in the region have become up to 15% more powerful over the past four decades. Typhoon Lion Rock swept across northern Japan on the night of September 6th. It has already killed 17 people and the country is bracing itself for another typhoon.